All right, uh, hello again, Squatters Wrongs, um, back on the Greyhounds now. So this is just another update video since the Major. We got our Greyhounds seven months ago video, which I hope you've seen. Um, this is an update from there. So obviously, I think in the last video, uh, the only issue Pippin was really having was during Christmas. So it was before the big snow and all that. But he did have a problem with his dry paw, uh, which I believe the salt grit uh, on the pavements outside dried out and that created... Yeah, just uncomfortable paws. It's split. You can see the split at the time. And then we kind of patched it up with Vaseline and gave him a rest, a few days of rest. And that was that done. And obviously bought him the shoes, which you'll see in the in the other video too. We have one shoe left. Um, if you do happen to be in the magnet and you find a spare shoe, that's where we lost it in the snow. So if you find it, I don't know, let me know. <coughs> or if, I don't know. But we have one and he's got one poorly foot still. So it's all good. We have one for him at the moment. And uh, the current problem doesn't seem to be a split in the paw at all. Uh, we had a long walk the other day, and I think that, yeah, just the day after, maybe he's just feeling it. We wore him down a bit too much. Um, so it could be the onset of a corn, or it could just be generally sore. I mean, if your feet were generally sore, and then every day you're kind of not really resting it, and you're just going out, uh, um, it'll never heal. And I believe, like, even if you sprained your own ankle, it takes the healing process is so much longer because your brain's telling you not to use the part that hurts obviously so every morning he does wake up at the moment <coughs> worse than he'll be after a five minute warm-up outside and then as soon as everything's moving he's much happier we put the boot on the, the poorly foot and then you as you'll see he's much happier after a little warm-up but i think every morning lately he's lifting his paw up he's not happy he's having a very quiet day today but i do have some videos for you these are all filmed on my phone and these were just out and about and uh just as is so uh, they might not make complete sense but hopefully they do and we get the general gist um so here's the intro bit i'm going to make the rest of the video and throw it all together now and then if anything does make sense i'll throw another message on the end but hey um thanks for coming back um welcome back to pippin's life and this is his new problem all right just got home <laughs> so this guy has a very poorly foot right so it's very hard to tell when your greyhound is in pain or not. Because he is. Right, you can see him limping. Right, hello. Hello. Right. So this is the thing. I've just been out for about kind of three hours. So this is as far as uh, separation anxiety goes. He just loves it when you come home. I don't think he cries all day. Hello. So we give him a little treat for looking after the house. Please see previous video. We've got schmackos. Just get a big box. Um, to be honest, Schmackos, being pedigree and being kind of like a big brand, tend to mess with his stomach more. And you could say the same about Baker's Complete. You could say the same. Oh, he definitely had a problem with Asda food, which I don't think I kept. Sorry, I had an Amazon delivery come. Right, um, yeah, the only major dog food issue. Hello, mate, you all right? some light come here don't know if you will have a drink now i'm home doesn't drink much on his tart so this is a thing don't think he drinks when we're away but when he does drink he obviously gannets it down so is it an issue i don't know he seems happy he doesn't seem dehydrated at any point and the thing is you can take at least this guy for a walk before breakfast for miles it's ridiculous i'm not sure what he runs on but then yeah i mean see the previous video for how much food we give him and we are actually upping that now to two and a half cups in the morning. Well, two and a half mugs in the morning, and then two at night, which is just an increase of half a cup a day. But you know, calories be calories, and I think he can put it on. He's not put weight on, he's not lost any. So I reckon we can up it. I mean, he gets multiple treats throughout the day too, so I guess he can put quite a bit away. Um, right, uh, join me in a second, and I'll go through the issue we're having at the moment. <laughs> If you do let your dog on the bed, it's easier to work on their feet because I don't know if anyone's told you yet, but greyhounds can't sit, right? And I didn't know that until I got one, essentially. They can't sit. Their bums and their legs and their muscles are too weird and big, so they have to lie down on their sides. Like this, at the very least. They can sit if they're under like immediate stress, but like it's not comfortable. They're not sitting. They're just kind of hunched down. But uh, to look at their paws, obviously you're going to want them on their side. So uh, let's get him on the bed. And we'll start there. Um, and arm yourself, especially for the, the last few problems we've had with him. Standard Vaseline has been good, but make sure your dog doesn't lick it. Um, it's not going to be good. I don't think it's life ruining or destroying, but not good for the stomach. But last time with the um, the split in his paws down because of the uh, 
the grit on the roads, well, on the pavements around Christmas, they dr they really dried the paws, the paws out. And I have looked online, and greyhounds are they've got the worst paws essentially. Um, well, they're, they're only used for racing and chilling, really, so they're not the strongest. Right, you come in, come on, mate. Come yeah, on. Up you go. Come on. Oop. Hey. All right. <coughs> there he is. Let's get you lying down. Hey. Buff, 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 buff. Right. Now this is much easier to work on your greyhound. It's all about. And you can. He's not stressed by any of these things being touched. So it's literally. I do believe it's a corn, uh, and nothing more. Maybe just sore paw in general maybe we wore the skin down too much they don't have the thickest skin on them apparently so this is the problem that was the face check whilst i prod absolutely fine he just looks at his people outside so he looks sadder than usual are you okay right so if we just have a quick proper zoomy look let see there's nothing crazy going on all of these toes completely movable separately. You get right in there. Some dogs hate this. He's okay with it. Um, and he doesn't see a problem with that. So that's when we started looking at the dew claw then, because that was sticking out more than usual, especially when he stood up. Because this one's pretty flat in, as you can see just there. And this one's sticking out, which I think is him straining his kind of straighter as you would like if you tense to get out of pain um yeah so i'm just going to rub all of them down with a little bit of vaseline and then we'll go for a quick walk keeps the water off him he doesn't eat this which is great it just gives him a chance not to take on water get completely dirty or whatever else do, 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 do. there you go camera was doing this but doesn't make it too much more difficult, does it, mate? Oh, he's asleep. <laughs> One eye open. Right, so then we'll, we'll go out for a walk after this because he's been locked in the house for about four hours. Ish. So, keep him moving. Get his bowels cleared and then we'll chill. And then I can put this bloody video together, I guess. Because that'll be him for the day. All right. And yeah, we can also rule out his claws being too long. Uh, we walk a lot. So they they don't make a noise on the pavement. They don't touch the ground when his foot's down. Um, they seem to shed themselves. They just kind of, the top layer seems to crack off eventually and that'll just fall off of its own accord. Doesn't bother him at all. Um, another thing with the, well, we'll get to that, but when I do put the booty on him, um, the boot actually squeezes the dew claw inwards and restrains it, which doesn't bother him. So I don't think it's too important when it comes to walking, but we'll see. Um, join us and we'll get him booted up. So here's the boot. We It was a pair. We lost one. Look at the previous video in the snow. He lost one, but we have got one and he's finally wearing one. So that's good. We fixed his right foot and now we've got one left to fix his... No, we fixed his left foot, but now we've got one to fix his right foot. So we're going to stick this on and then we'll pop outside. Pippin, come on. Come here. Come on. Whee, here he comes. So we'll see the limp maybe. Hey, come here. Come here. Come here. There you go. So we can see this dew claw sticking out a fair bit more than that one. It doesn't put the weight on. He's very... Oh, little burp from him. But yeah, you can... This is sticking out now, this force, but you can push it in and he doesn't mind. So I think that's him straining it. I'm not a vet, but this is... This is kind of how life is, I guess. You kind of try and figure a little bit out for yourself what you're going to do. Right, so we'll get this shoe on. Um, should put that there. Buff, buff, buff. Right Come okay, up we go. And pop. Make sure you don't catch the dew claw in it. I don't know if you can see. But there you go. So it is fairly tight. He'll pretend he can't walk on it for a second, then he'll get used to it. And then we'll go for a little walk, yeah? There you go. Let's swap feet, get used to that. So he can bear all of his weight on this one leg, so it's nothing muscular either. He doesn't seem in pain or shaking. Usually his nose drips if he's in distress. And we're on the verge, but we're all right, aren't we, mate? So we're going to go for a wee and uh, we'll try and get some videos of how he's doing. Uh, you can you can choose for yourself. This is a good method. I think he's happier. Wait and see. 
So yeah, I do have a video of him full limping without the boot on, just to check he wasn't pretending to limp and get home, because he does seem to like chirp up when you head back towards the flat and there's food. So to get that out of the equation, it was on the way back, we took the boot off and uh, yeah, the limp was still there. So it's definitely a problem, he's not being malicious. But yeah, here's a quick video of the limps from this morning. Right, just a quick bit more uh, more information on this. Um, I don't explain this in the video. So generally, as you can see in the walk, just he's wearing his coat, he's wearing his big brace thing as well, and that's rattling away. And he's got his shoe on, uh, and he and he is limping more. Uh, this is later on in the day. This isn't the morning, but I have a video from the morning, and I didn't put his back brace on, so that's a little bit less weight over his front end anyway, and maybe a bit less restraint as well, so he could like freely move. So I'll show you a video from this morning's walk when he didn't have everything on. He just has his neck collar on, which is much lighter, and just the jacket as well. So he's got a lot more range of movement with his front legs, I'd assume. So um, check out how much happier he was this morning as well. And then just think of all the things that could possibly affect how your greyhound's walking. You want to make them as happy as you can, just so you can figure out where the problem really is, because they could just be uncomfortable. Uh, things could be rubbing in various areas, like the amount of kit they have on. You have to put the coats on because they they get too cold at this time of year, so it's it's necessary. Um, but yeah, there's so many combinations of what might make your greyhound happy again that you've got to go through them all. And if you don't, you might just end up paying a massive vet bill because you didn't check all the obvious options first. So give it time. Um, check everything you can. And yeah, watch this video from this morning. And he was... It's absolutely different. He's not limping at all. And this was after just waking up and before breakfast. <coughs> so yeah, completely different monster all over again. So uh, here you go. Here's the next bit. Watch that. Um, and then I might need to record another one just to wrap up. But hopefully this is all making sense so far and you're enjoying it. Uh, here we go. Uh, stop. Wait. Uh, good boy. Right. Come on there. Good boy. Smiling, I think. No nose drips. So as you can see, just a little close up on the boots in action. Uh, that's how they sit, which is basically just around this bit, which doesn't give them any issues from what I can see. Um, this is the extra large, I believe, because they've got long nails and toes. So it gives them room. Um, but yeah, as you can see, where the dew claw is, it does keep that wrapped as well, which I don't know if it helps. We've got a bit of a drippy nose, don't we? But he's okay. So we'll get back in now. Now he's tired. And wrap this whole thing up and then he's going to chill pretty much for the next few days yeah poor bugger right and that's pretty much all i've got up to now uh in the saga that is pippin saw paw um join me tomorrow potentially if there's an improvement i'll film something and throw it up there um for now we've done our work we will pop out for one more probably like 10 and that'll be him for the night and it'll be a quick one we won't walk at all it'll be straight out on the grass and back in so as far as from now until the morning goes he's gonna have his foot vaseline again and he's gonna sleep and that's it and we're just gonna chill and chill and cut the walks down for the weekend and then yeah hopefully i'll have an update for you to see if this has worked out if not monday's update will be our first vet visit so either way we've got content Thanks for joining me. I'm Squatters Wrongs and that's Pippin. He's over there and he's asleep. But thanks for uh, joining in his journey. He appreciates it. Like and subscribe. Tell your friends, anyone who's thinking about getting a greyhound or anyone who's thinking about not getting a greyhound because they're worried or anything. Uh, get them to watch these. It's very easy. Um, and it's it's a lovely little experience. So, uh, yeah, share. Share. Tell all your friends. Thank you very much.